Hey Team Stoker here and what I have for you today are 10 survival tips and tricks that you can put in your kit bag as you continue to master your craft and develop your tactical virtue. You know, being able to procure water is certainly on top of our survival priorities. And of course there are many ways to do that and you know, pulling from a moving body of water is certainly a go-to and tried and proven method but just because we have some water doesn't mean that it's clean doesn't mean that it's ready to be consumed so you know we're going to just use a canteen and we're going to procure some water and then we need to have a way to purify it again to make sure that it's not going to to tear us up on the inside and come out worse on the back side. So one of the ways that we've done so in the military is by using iodine tablets. And that's what the extra pouch is on the exterior of the canteen pouch is to hold that canister of iodine tablets. So depending on what uh, manufacturer you're using, you want to make sure that you follow those recommendations and then just pop them in and shake it up and let it sit, you know, for about half an hour. And what I would submit to you is before you do consume that water is to make sure that you open up the lid just a little bit and pour some of it out to make sure that anything, that, any of that nasty water that may be on the threads uh, will be gone. And of course, always make sure you pick up your trash and put it back up. Now you're ready to, to diddy mow and to pop smoke and the Charlie Mike. Definitely looking forward to hearing your thoughts and your comments down below, team, of the skills that we're going to be looking at here and skills that we should have been looking at. Next up, we have a Dakota fire pit, uh, which is used for not necessarily survival uh, situations, but it is a good trick because you can reduce your thermal background. Now, most people build a Dakota fire pit on flat ground. In this case, I had a small hill that I was basically able to uh, dig a vertical hole and then almost a horizontal hole uh, to get it all going. Now, the myth is that a Dakota fire pit will not emit any smoke and because it's drawing in more oxygen and so it has a more efficient burn but what i would tell you is that's not always going to be the case especially you know if you're burning some green wood or you know if you do have too much wood uh, that you're trying to burn and more than what you can uh, get going with the amount of oxygen that you have but done properly uh, it will do a much more effective job the other really good thing about a dakota fire pit is that it's just easier to manage, right? You can, you know, you basically have just a little stove, and you, sometimes you have to be creative. You could use a tripod to hold a pot. In this case, I'm going to be able to take my canteen and set it right down in the hole. And of course, I'm going to be using gloves so I don't burn my hands. My, Mrs. Stoker wants me to have good hands, uh, but it doesn't take that long to get this thing going. See, so setting the camera out, not too much smoke emerging from that fire. And there we have a little bit of smoke emerging. So, see, it's all going to be a little bit different. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Next up, you know, being able to orient yourself, uh, there, and there are a ton of ways to do that. In this case, I'm standing by a unique bend in the Nisqually River. And as I look at this river, and I pay attention to what direction that it's traveling and how it's bending around, I can identify that feature on my map. And if I just want, you know, a little extra uh, confidence in what I'm doing, I can pull out the old compass and orient myself and orient myself in the direction that I'm looking at to understand where on this river that I'm at. You notice that map was upside down, and that's because I had oriented the map so that when I looked down at the map and then looked up, the world would be right, uh, just like your GPS app or map in your car continues to turn with every turn that you take. 
So now we know exactly where we're at, and now there's only one thing left to do before we leave this beautiful site, and that's to enjoy some tears of economy. Which, if you didn't know, every time that you like, share, leave a comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell, all that good stuff, my flask gets filled with them, and I appreciate you guys. Having a way to, to signal for help, especially if you've been injured, in this case, you know, I built a, a makeshift splint using some duct tape and some uh, sticks that I found, uh, but you, after that, man, you really need a way to, to be able to get some kind of message out there and using a thermal blanket is one of those ways especially if you have a good sunny day so in this case i'm going to stretch this thermal blanket out and i'm going to attach it to some sticks and put those sticks in the ground but i don't want it all the way on the ground at all four sides if i have one side that's elevated a little bit what it's going to do is cast a straight shadow on the ground and those straight lines can be much more visible uh, at a distance as well as up close. And once you have this thing set up, you know, it's just a matter of standing by to stand by and wait for some kind of a plane to fly overhead and hope that that freedom bird uh, will look down on you and, you know, ultimately radio and get you some help and assistance. And here we have this bird coming in. And, hello, I'm down here. Come on, <laughs> you fat boy. Air Force pilot, send down some help. Let's get out of here. But of course that dude, he didn't care about me. He don't care. He didn't even stop and turn around. What's wrong with that guy? So next up, again, again, and again, and again, and again. Water is your, one of your priorities. You know, maintaining a core body temperature is probably one of the most important survival skills uh, that you can have. Uh, but being able to consume uh, water, in this case we have a lake, right? It's not moving. And so this lake is a little bit more stagnant uh, than a lot of other lakes that's out there. And so I gotta, I gotta have a way to filter some of this water uh, before I consume it. So I'm just gonna dip my pot down in the water and pull up uh, almost a, a well, I got a full can there, but I did uh, empty some of it out as we get ready to fill up my canteen cup. And what I'm going to use is a shamag as a first layering uh, method for filtering this water. Now, I will admit and submit to you that it's not going to, to filter down that small, but you'll notice, you know, once you start pouring it in, uh, the water will sit on the fibers of that shamag. And as it becomes more and more saturated, it will enable water to flow down a little bit quicker. And you can see we're starting to pick up some of that grass, and it will get the larger particles out, but it's not going to filter it to such a degree that it is drinkable, right? It is, we're not purifying our water. We're just getting all those big, icky yuckies out. And I had just a little simple slip knot over that, so we can take that schmog off and get it on the fire and get it boiling and then we can let it cool off or enjoy some coffee and be able to carry out our day just an absolutely beautiful view up here at lake lewis if you're ever up in the pacific northwest uh, this is certainly a spot i would recommend going because it is pretty awesome and if you don't have gloves use a pair of sticks to get that canteen cup off the fire sometimes you got to be a little careful because you don't want to dump it down into the water uh, but you should be good to go carrying on uh, with the last skill and the first skill you know, sometimes you need to have a pace plan when it comes to um, cooking and when it comes to our water and consumption when it comes to fire making when it comes to everything I, I would just tell you have some redundancies in your system in this case I want to heat up uh, some water to enjoy some coffee because it's a little chilly uh, earlier this morning as we're moving about and I'm just going to use a standard old school heat tab in this thing I'll tell you it works quick uh, and if you've never used one uh, definitely let me know in the comments if you have used one and can testify to, to what I'm about to say. But you do not want to breathe. You do not want to inhale 
uh, what's coming off of this tab, right? So make sure that you don't use it in a closed indoor space and it's not a Tide Pod. Now I don't recommend, you know, drinking Starbucks uh, coffee because, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but I did happen to have some that was left over and I'm not a wasteful man uh, to just discard things. So I'm going to go ahead and consume it. But I do have to filter, well, I have to purify the Starbucks coffee. And you know what? There's no better way to do that after this coffee's warmed up than you got it with the tears of a commie. Now, this flask is almost filled with them, uh, but I got enough to, to get in here. It, it takes, sometimes it can take quite a bit uh, to purify, but uh, you know, a little bit of tears goes a long ways. The tabs don't last forever. Um, as, as if you've used them, you can testify. You're going to get a, a little bit of heat out of them, but you're not going to get, like, to be able to cook an entire five course meal. But we got enough to get this uh, coffee going, and I think we're about ready to move on to the next step. Warning yourself and having a general understanding of direction. If you can see the moon at any point in time, uh, whether it's waxing or waning, if you can draw an imaginary line from tip to tip, that is a north and south line. And from there, all you have to do is to figure out which side is east and which side is west. If you just give it a few minutes, it's going to become obvious as the stars and the moon itself are moving. But that's just a quick trick here that you can use, uh, whether it's daytime or nighttime, right? Let me know down in the comments below if, if you knew this trick, if you knew the survival skill. But I found quite a few people had no idea. One of nature's compasses. You know, chem lights uh, and making the, the beloved buzzsaw is one of, uh, it's one of our favorite ways of being able to send a message at night, especially in a survival situation. You, know, you may be stuck and lost somewhere, and, and being able to, to put that chem light on a stick uh, and spin it around is super effective. But what a lot of people don't know is that you do make they do make smaller chem lights, which I've used in the past for communicating inside of a patrol, especially before we were using nods, and you can't see anything at night. And I don't recommend walking around at night with nods on, anyways, uh, because I'm not a I'm not an IG goober. But being able to uh, communicate and send signal messages during the daytime, you need something different. And one of the other most common ways of doing that is by using a VS-17 panel. And so here we got the, you know, so here we're using, you know, the old SkyDio drone to try to get some visualization as far as how effective that it is from a distance. But one of the great things about VS-17 panels is that you do have some grommets on it so that you can affix it to the top of a vehicle uh, to be able to, for friendly forces to be able to identify friendly vehicles from the sky, right? Which is used during uh, war during the past you know, 20, 30 years. So, you know, you're moving about and you're trying to find some water. Maybe you're in an area that you know and you know about where you can find it. Or maybe you are in an unknown location and you're having to rely on what you can see on your map as you navigate the terrain. And sticks, uh, Riggs never has any problems finding sticks, I can tell you that much. He's a, he's a stick dog. So we're going to move over to this uh, small body of water. And, you know, this is not necessarily a military survival trick, except to tell you that, you, you know, you can't be afraid to use commercial off-the-shelf equipment. And, you know, again, having a number of ways to be able to consume water, I would submit to you, is the way to go. So as we move down to... The water side, Riggs is going to have fun uh, just swimming. He absolutely loves the water, and it won't take him long to jump in there and start swimming around, get all the yuckies to start coming to the surface for me to help test out this next piece.
piece of gear. And what I'm going to be using here is a GeoPress. And, you know, I, it, they are super effective and efficient. I will tell you that. They, they do cost a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, scoop it up and push it down. And you have some water that you can take with you. And what I would submit to you here is just an additional uh, consideration is always make sure you leave a body of water with a full canteen, right? Does that make sense? So take that for what it's worth. Well, team, I appreciate you guys. Make sure you leave a comment down below as we continue to master our craft and develop our tactical virtue. Until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked. Team, if you want to master your craft and develop your tactical virtue, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so that you can stay up to date on future content. Consider becoming a channel member. It's going to give you exclusive access to content not available to anybody else. I appreciate you guys. Until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.